Now we're looking to compute estimated time en route for each of our legs. To compute that, we need distance and ground speed, both of which we have, and we can use our E6B to figure out the values. So on the E6B, you set the speed, the ground speed, onto the black arrow. So we're going to set that at 129. And then we're going to read distance over minutes. So distance in this case is 14 miles. And then we're going to read minutes on the inner scale. So it's showing about six and a half, which we're going to round up to seven. But before we write in that seven minutes here in this field, we need to account for the time that it takes to climb out at a slower speed and perhaps the time that it's going to take to get pointed in the right direction after we take off on a runway that might have us going the wrong way. So a rule of thumb that I've used that I found to be fairly accurate is to add in six minutes to the leg time for the first leg. Now, if you have a POH that lists figures for the amount of time that it takes to climb, the climb speed, and the fuel burn on climb, you can use those actual numbers from the POH. But in absence of that, be sure to add in some kind of a reserve for takeoff, extra time and extra fuel. So seven minutes is computed on the E6B, plus our arbitrary six minutes add-on for climb out and maybe a turnaround gives us 13 minutes. Now let's do our next line. So our next line, we're going 123 over the ground, and we're going for 24 nautical miles. So we'll take our E6B, and instead of 129, I'll set it down to 123. And now I'm going to read distance over minutes. Distance this time is 24 miles. 24 miles, and I go down to the inner scale and read minutes. It's a little bit in the middle of between 11 and 12. We're going to round up to 12 minutes. So I put 12 minutes for my second leg. My third leg happens to be the exact same distance at the exact same ground speed, just by chance, so it's also going to be 12 minutes.